Thanks, guys. This is House Call. We're making the rounds this morning of some of the most intriguing medical stories of the week. First up, would you know what to do if you were having a stroke? Why the first three hours could be crucial to your recovery. And it's all about image. What people in Hollywood are turning to for a boost of youth. And the ride of a lifetime. Would you take the risk? I did. Watch and see what happens. Plus, how healthy is your city? We'll tell you all this and more at House Call. We start, though, with the news about a disease that kills one person every three to four minutes. Could cost Americans more than $65 billion this year. We're talking about strokes. And the American Stroke Association released some new information this week. Joining us to talk about it, Dr. Nisa Goldberg, cardiologist from New York University. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's good to see you. This was an interesting conference, sounds like. Uh, first of all, the thing that really struck me was women in their 30s, 40s, and 50s having strokes. You typically think about this as an older person's disease and typically men. What's going on? Younger women, and we find it's related to obesity. We used to think that the leading risk factor for stroke was high blood pressure, but in this younger group of women, it's obesity, and it's related to the thing, th one of the bad things that obesity does, raise blood sugar. We're starting to see the ramifications of the obesity epidemic. We talk about this a lot. You've written a book specifically about women's health. What are some of the things that women should look for if they're concerned that they might be having a stroke? I mean, is it different in women versus men? Some of the symptoms are similar, some are different. You know, typical symptoms are sudden headache, weakness of the face, arm or leg, difficulty speaking, dizziness, feeling a lack of coordination. But in this particular conference, what they found is women just experience a generalized feeling of fatigue mm. or disorientation. So it's really important for everyone to know all the signs of a stroke because oftentimes a person who's having a stroke may not be able to call 911 themselves. So we need families and neighbors and everyone in the community to know about stroke symptoms. You know, my wife's in her 30s and she, she would tell you that she has generalized fatigue all the time. I mean, we have two small children. What, 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 I mean, how does she know, seriously though, when she should be calling somebody? You know, it all comes down to knowing what your risk for stroke is. And certainly, as I mentioned, obesity, high blood pressure, family history, and smoking. You know if you're just fatigued because you're overworked, you're not right. getting enough sleep, or you're just doing too many things. When a person is having a stroke, this is an often a very sudden and scary feeling. Right, right. And you need to get help. So it comes on pretty quickly. Where do you come down on supplements? The people talk about fish oil, for example, a lot in terms of warding off heart disease, warding off stroke. Good idea? Waste of money. It's a waste of money. Fish oil supplements really? don't reduce risk of heart attack or stroke. And that has been documented in a number of medical studies. What we do know is that if you eat two servings of fish a week, you have a lower risk of heart attack and stroke. So you eat it in your food. Don't take the pill. To get, get the food instead of the, the pills, but may save some money and taste better too, by the way. Uh, we got a lot of email questions uh, coming in, on particularly about stroke. Uh, one from Ken in Ohio who asked this, My wife suffered a stroke last June and has since been dealing with intense feelings about dread and generalized anxiety. Is there information regarding this topic? You know, you think about stroke and, and all the things that you mentioned, but what about some of the longer-term psychological ramifications? It's, it's very common and more common than you might think, but oftentimes the stroke patient really stays home and doesn't express these feelings to their, their families. It's really important for the patient and the caregiver to talk to their doctor and also look at the American Stroke Association website or American Heart Association website for more information. There was one final thing that I saw was interesting. Cat owners? Are they more likely, less likely to develop strokes? What, what, what was the deal there? Cat owners are less likely to have strokes, and actually pet owners in general are less likely to have heart attacks and stroke, and that is related to the concept of social support. So you have your, your, your cat or your dog social support, and if you're allergic to pets, having good friends and family members are also a good network for social support. That's probably good for all aspects of your health. Hey, thanks for being here. Good luck with the book as well. Thank you. Really important stuff. Dr. Nisa Goldberg, thank you. Now, you've probably heard some allegations